So now we're going to talk about coenzymes and the role that they're going to play in energy transfer and that's basically what's keeping us alive so it's pretty important. So coenzymes are going to, in, in this case, they're going to basically carry electrons from one place to the other because as you remember, electrons can't just cruise around by themselves and end up somewhere, right? They have to get it kind of shuttled from one place to the other. So a really important one that we're going to talk about is something called NAD+. Nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. You can just call it NAD+. That's what it stands for. Okay, so um, this is really going to be important um, as far as keeping us alive. Um, and I can show you a picture of it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is actually what it looks like. Don't worry too much about that, but if you were interested, this is what it looks like. Okay. Now, um, what it's going to do is it's going to shuttle electrons. And so it's going to do that by um, accepting two electrons and a proton in the form of a hydrogen, okay? So if you look here, I say when NAD plus accepts two electrons and a proton, that's actually one electron and a hydrogen atom from the active site of an enzyme. It gets reduced to NADH. That's really wordy and, and scary looking. Okay, so let's take it piece by piece. NAD plus is accepting two electrons and a proton, okay? And that's going to be in the form of hydrogen that I'll show you in a little bit. And what's going to happen is it's going to be reduced because it's accepting electrons, it's gaining electrons reduction to NADH, okay? So anytime you hear me say NAD plus is going to get to reduced to NADH, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, let's look at a little picture to kind of show you what is Fleur talking about. Okay, so what's going to happen in your mitochondria is there's going to be these um, proteins that you see that I've drawn here. Okay, and these proteins are going to give off an electron. Now that electron um, needs to go all the way over to here. The only way it can get there is through NAD+. So what's going to happen is NAD+, is actually going to pick up a hydrogen. Now I'm going to draw down here. If you remember, a hydrogen has one electron, and it actually just has one proton. It doesn't have any neutrons, right? Um, sorry, what is going on here? Um, so anyway, what's going to happen is that hydrogen can technically hold two electrons in its outermost shell, right? So what's going to happen is it's going to pick up this electron and now its outermost shell is full, okay? So what's going to happen here is that NAD plus is actually going to turn into NADH. And what I mean by that is it's picked this whole complex up that I was talking about. Now that NADH can shuttle over here and it's actually going to drop off that hydrogen and it's going to let go of that electron, right? So then the hydrogen can actually be used somewhere else or whatever, but that's kind of how it's going to be set up, okay? So the whole role, the main thing you want to take from this is that NADH is going to pick up an electron and it's going to bring it over here. Okay, so NADH basically just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to do that the entire time. That's its only job, okay? All right, so let's talk about ATP. ATP is going to come up quite a bit because that's what's keeping us alive as well. That's our energy source. And so what we're doing in our mitochondria all the time is we're converting glucose molecules into ATP. That's kind of how it works. Um, so it's going to be set up... Where is my do 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 do? There we go. Um, this is what ATP looks like. So you've got adenosine, and then you have triphosphate. You have these three phosphates here. Now, what I want you to notice about ATP is the charge on these phosphates. They're all negative, aren't they? Okay, that's going to be super important because what we what we learned about way back with the chemistry stuff was that opposites attract, right? So really, these negatives are repelling each other if you think about it. So what's going to happen is, you know, I keep saying ATP, it's great for energy, but I haven't really explained how that works. So let me get something pretty. Okay, so if we talk about ATP, we have A, and then we've got our three phosphates, right? Okay. 
these all have a negative charge, right? So what's going to happen is they're repelled by one another. So this bond right here is an extremely high energy bond that cannot wait to break. It cannot wait to break because they're being repelled by one another, right? So that right there is why ATP is such a huge source of energy for us. So what we do all day is we basically break apart ATP into ADP and P. And I'll show you what I mean by that because that might be confusing. Okay, so really ATP is adenosine triphosphate and we're converting it into ADP plus P, we've broken that last P off, okay? This is releasing, release energy when you do that, okay? So taking ATP and turning it into ADP and P is breaking that bond and releasing energy. That is huge in the processes that we're going to talk about, so you want to make sure that that makes sense to you. Um, so like I was saying, it stores energy in that third bond. It's very unstable because they are all repelling each other very strongly. So um, we use ATP to power any reaction in our body that's endergonic, which is an energy requiring reaction. So there's all sorts of different ways we do that. Now, um, one thing that you can see in this picture here is sometimes we will have these kind of chain reactions going on in our um, cells or wherever in our bodies. Now, a lot of times that's great. We want that to happen. But there's obviously going to be a point where we don't need any more of those products, right? So one thing that our body can do that's pretty cool is something called feedback inhibition, which is basically what will happen out of enzyme 4 here is it will make something that will actually go up here and click in and block it until it gets a signal to start this whole process again. So feedback inhibition is basically enzyme, the last enzyme, making some sort of inhibitor that will click into enzyme 1. And so that will actually keep that process from happening and you, keep you from like creating too much of a chemical or something like that. So those are all really important processes that are keeping you alive and keeping everything going the way that it should be. And so in the next chapter, we're going to get into what's actually happening at a mitochondrial level that's keeping you alive and um, how that whole process works.